My name is Mary Jane Edwards, and it is my pleasure once again to be at Three Square Gallery in Fort Collins. I had the pleasure of, during the exhibition, New Horizons Landscape, the third annual uh, exhibition for this particular theme. I had such a wonderful time looking at all the uh, entries, and it was, in some ways, it was really difficult to select, but I think that, as, as usual, um, Kimmy does a wonderful job of installing, and we have a really thought-provoking and exciting uh, series of work for people to look at. There is, there is a significant history in the arts for landscape. It's a really tough subject, I think, because you're always, you know, as an artist, you're challenged to, what are you going to do that's new? What are you going to do that's different? How are you going to uh, advance that particular um, that particular theme or that particular frame of reference. And you have so many great landscape artists before you. Some of them were captured by the beauty and the color of landscape and the textures that are there. A number of the photographs were taking a different point of view. Um, rather than just standing and looking out at the landscape, you were, you were kind of hunkered down and looking you know, across the, the snow-covered field and, and looking at the majesty of the mountains um, in the distance. And one, one of the photographers did digital photography and was doing the bird's eye view, you know. Uh, the drone has been, I think, something that's been very interesting, in, you know, to people, you know, to, to play with and to, to experiment with, and more and more artists are using that. So um, this particular artist really was able to take some unusual photographs and to help us look at the landscape, which we're so familiar, you know, having feet on the ground, look at the landscape in such a, a very, very different way, and a different way of abstraction. I, I think that what I enjoyed in this particular exhibition was how so many people who are in this exhibition rose to the challenge of making something that was very, very personal in interpreting the landscape, um, either through abstraction or a more traditional approach, or really some very, very thought-provoking um, pieces where they were taking you uh, into the landscape in a very, very intimate way and showing you, you know, different ways to look at the landscape and, and respond. Something that I really enjoyed about this particular exhibition was the variety of media that artists were using. Um, so you, you certainly expect, you know, people who are trained in in, um, in drawing and painting, and you know, you'll have ex you'll have pieces that are using collage or, or pastel, and they really, really developed their own style. But then, for this particular exhibition, um, we had a number of people who were using, for example, fabric. Um, we were using textiles, and again, it's it's taking something that's familiar, you know, the blue jeans of the West, that is you know, kind of our our uniform from the bottom down, both for men and women, and beginning to assemble this into a landscape-like kind of imagery with the, with the you know, the, the patterning of the fields and the roads and, and the patchwork kind of effect that you get. Mm -hmm. Again, looking, looking, um, looking at it from the bird's eye point of view. Like the this is an honorable mention for Susan R. Owens from Colorado Springs. And of all the, the pieces in the exhibition that are dealing with maybe more recognizable uh, approaches to the landscape, I kept coming back to this one. And, and I, it caught my attention, I think, because of the more realistic uh, interpretation of the, the, um, the tree limbs. And there's this wonderful kind of repetition, this geometric kind of play and repetition, and this more fanciful layering, um, abstracting the leaves. And certainly the color sense is wonderful in that, and um, I, I think it deserved an honorable mention. Another honorable mention goes to Don Vogel, um, top of Alberta Falls from Fort Collins, Colorado. I came back to this one again and again because it reminded me of how you can take a walk in, in the woods or, or along a creek, and so many times we're in so much of a hurry, we don't stop and pause. And this artist has done a wonderful job of helping us slow down and to look at these massive stone forms and this wonderful kind of rushing, surging water. So you get the, the, the motion and the, you, can, you can almost hear the sound um, that he's able to capture with the way he's, he's rendered and, and uh, uh, interpreted the falls. Um, I think it's a lovely piece. I really enjoy looking at it. I do the jurying from uh, JPEGs, and so it's always quite fun to come and actually see 
the artwork to understand what the scale is. And also, when you're looking at artwork, you see the intimacy. You, know, you can see the intimacy of the surfaces and, and so much more than when you're just looking at a, at a JPEG. Uh, this person's work really captured my attention. Shan, Sean Baggert is from Midland, Michigan. And he entered three different digital photographs. And he, I had a tough time deciding which one of the three was going to get bronze because I kept going back and forth because each one has its own integrity and its own richness. Um, they're all shot with a drone, and they're all giving you that different perspective on the landscape. And, and, it, and in a lot of ways, it's not looking at the, the beauty and the majesty. majesty. The, he, he was able to capture each one of them kind of the rawness and the real um, richness of texture and color and, uh, and, and kind of the, the dryness of the landscape. And, you know, maybe, it's, maybe it was provocative to me because also, you know, going through a drying period, you know, how we experience drought in this part of the country and what the drought and what the water does, you know, to give us life and to give us a beautiful green landscape, but also the power of of uh, water to carve out and to give us such a rich kind of um, texture. This piece of Jason Lanigan, which I um, awarded this a silver uh, award, is quite interesting in the fact that you look at it, and the more you look at it, the more you see. Um, he takes you for a walk. He takes you for a drive. He takes you out into the landscape. And you know the use of the map and these kind of standing stones, um, and then this little insert with all the kind of treasures that you might find as you're walking along. Parts of history, you know, a marble, a piece of, of twine, a shell, all the kinds of treasures you might find that, in some ways, seem insignificant, you know, in our consumer society, but have a really rich and beautiful kind of testimony to nature. And it's all in here. Um, the other thing I found interesting is. A collage, you know, the whole fact that this is all rendered with paper collage and uh, quite masterfully, and um, a wonderful blending as far as the sky is concerned, uh, and the kind of identification of where this place is. So you're, you're intrigued about, I want to go there, or I've been there, or this is what I might be able to find, or maybe the next time I take a walk or I drive across the landscape, I might get out of my car and look and see what's there. And it's my pleasure to award the gold to Logan Woodall from Conway, South Carolina, for this piece titled, Only Thing That Grows Here Now Is Our Cell Towers. And when I saw this in a JPEG, it really startled me. And when I walked into the gallery, um, I, I almost described it as gut-wrenching. Gut, gut because it's taking something that's very familiar. When we, we drive along the landscape, we don't even see silos anymore. Um, but we're seeing cell towers, and we're seeing you know, solar wind farms, you know, or wind farms being developed, and solar panels going up in, on, the, on the farmland. And so it's this kind of conflict between the agrarian society that, that um, you know, is part of our, our country and founding of our country, and the, the bread belt, that it, you know, the, the heartland that is still so responsible for growing our food. So the silo is there, and there's the cell tower. And so it's these two things that are familiar, but they're in conflict. And, they're, and I love the kind of, you know, the tilt that's there, that's turned upside down. Um, you know, the roots here are kind of ripped from the earth. Um, you know, everything's askew, and it's, it's, uh, it's very thought-provoking. You know, it brings a, an emotional response. It brings a, an intellectual response. It's very, very thoughtful. Um, and I think he did a beautiful job in terms of the craftsmanship and the use of materials. But boy, conceptually, it's gold all over.